I'm Christopher, and welcome to the Cabin Boy Knits Woolcast. This episode is all about dyeing with cannabis. Dyeing yarn with cannabis. Cannabis has been around for thousands and thousands of years, and it was actually the first plant that was used to be cultivated to use for textiles. And this plant has just so many wonderful benefits to it. It is used in textiles, it's used for medicinal purposes, it's been used through um, religious ceremonies, and you can make oil out of it, um, biodiesel. There's just so many great things that you can do with this plant. And when you look through history of, of the cannabis plant, one thing you won't find is dyeing, dyeing fiber. There's not a lot mentioned about dyeing fiber. Uh, and so that's a red flag for me. I'm concerned when I don't see that. So I started wondering, you know, why is it that this plant um, doesn't, when you look through history, it doesn't discuss dyeing. And I think part of that is that there are so many other benefits to this plant, and so dyeing is secondary. And so, you know, it raised a red flag for me. So I started dyeing yarn with it, and I started exposing it to the elements. I put it through the washing machine. I put it out in the sun, out in the cold. And after a couple of years, the color still stays. So it's one of my favorite things to dye. And the color is very unique. It's it's, you'll see it once we finish dyeing, but it's got a certain hue to it that is very difficult to find in, in other botanicals. So let's get dyeing with cannabis leaves. What you'll need when you're dyeing uh, cannabis leaves is you will need some pots. And what I like to do is I like to pre-mordant my fiber before I dye with it. And if you've watch some of my other episodes, you know what that means. Really, I want to bind an agent to my to my yarn before I put it in my dye pot with leaves. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking my yarn, I'm washing it. It's very, very important to wash your yarn because it has oils on it. Oils on it from uh, the processing or, or the mill and it's got some oil in it as well just from, from the sheep. So you want to uh, take that out when, you, when you're dying because what will happen is it will block uh, or prevent um, the, the color from adhering to the yarn, and you won't have consistent a consistent color across the yarn. Um, if you don't care about that, then then don't worry about it. But uh, I always wash my yarn, and um, I use a pH neutral soap when I do that. So wash it, uh, rinse it, and then it's ready to be pre mordanted So I get my pot ready, and I put some alum in my pot, and it's 10% of the weight of the dry fiber. And I get that going, I put it on simmer and leave that for, um, it, 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 it really depends. You can put it in for an hour, you can put, leave it in overnight uh, with the heat turned off. Um, I found that really the sweet spot is probably around an hour on, on simmer. And then once I get that, I rinse it and I put it aside and I'm ready to start my dye pot. And you know, I'm really lucky that I have friends who grow cannabis plants because what they do is they give me the leaves and the leaves are usually discarded and people put them in the compost or they just throw them out and so I always reach out and just tell them to give them to me or ask them to give them to me and so I've been really lucky to, to get some plants and not all plants are created equal. Here's an example of one cannabis plant and I have a friend who has huge cannabis bushes. And so he gives me the leaves from those, and I've received bags and bags of them so far this year. So I'm going to get the bags, and then we'll start filling up our dye pot. So here's an example of just uh, some of the cannabis that he, that he gave me, and I've got a couple garbage bags this size. It's absolutely huge. Now, when you're looking at the leaf, we want to use, I like to use the fan leaf. There's two leaves on a cannabis plant. There's the fan leaf, and then there's the sugar leaves. The sugar leaves are a lot smaller, and they're closer to the bud. But the fan leaf is, is the one that I use. And you can use it fresh or you can use it dried. And I will dry them out a little bit before I use them. Um, and, and these ones are pretty, pretty much dried. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the dried cannabis. And so when I talk about dried, it's usually you leave it out for a week and it dries. The other thing you can do with these dried leaves is you can make a tea out of them. And the tea is great. On its own, it's got a very unique taste to it. And uh, so you can add honey or you can add lemon or just add it with your regular tea. So what I'm going to be doing is filling this up. 
The other thing is, you know, if you're thinking, am I going to get stoned if I'm drinking the tea? You're not, because it's highly unlikely, because the THC that comes out of this, really, you need to, first of all, there isn't a lot um, that can be found in the leaves, and secondly, um, it used to be a really hot temperature for a period of time in order to bring the THC out uh, for hallucinogenic uh, effects, so you're really not going to get a buzz from the tea. Um, but it's packed with nutrients, so that's why I like it. The other thing is probably even, even better is when you take these leaves and you use them fresh, you can put them in your smoothies, and they are packed with nutrients in them. So, uh, and it doesn't really alter the flavor that much, so it's, um, it's very, very useful. Other people will take the leaves, and they will process the leaves um, to get the oils out of them and um, use them for creams because there's uh, medicinal quality, qualities as well. But we are here to dye yarn. So I've got this, I've got it halfway. I'm actually going to add a little bit more. I fill this up three quarters of the way. So I filled my pot two thirds, three quarters of the way, and then I'm going to add water to it. And I use uh, rainwater. You can use any type of water. Um, the pH is going to be different in, in all of them. But I've got rain barrels all over the all around the cabin, so I use rainwater as much as I can uh, throughout the spring, summer, and fall before it gets too cold and freezes. So I fill that up. And I'm going to let that simmer. And I'm going to let that simmer for around five hours. And it's just a slow simmer. I don't, you don't want to boil it because it can definitely have an impact on the color. So I'm going to let this simmer for five hours. It's been around five hours now, closer to six hours, and it's been simmering nicely. I want to check the color now and see what it looks like. Look at, look at that deep color. It's really nice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the cannabis leaves out and, and remove them and I'll, I'll compost those and then they will be, this pot will be ready to add my fiber. So we're ready now to remove the cannabis from the pot and we've got a really nice rich color in the pot so it'll be perfect for dyeing. And I just remove it like this. I just grab it, take it out. You'll notice that the color doesn't really bleach that much either from the, from the plant. You can also just put a strainer on the top of here and dump it in the bucket, but really there aren't many small leaves, so I, I just do it this way. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my wet fiber to my dye pot. I have a hank of merino wool, so I will put the merino wool in the dye pot now. And I'm going to let that sit for at least an hour, and then I'll come back and check on it. And see if I like the color or not, leave it a little, little bit longer. At some point, it will take in as much color as it can. I've had this pot going for about a week, and 
rather than just disposing of it after a couple of uh, dozen skeins, I just keep adding more cannabis leaves to it. And then I'll add more water because obviously you're taking some of the water out of the pot or some of it's evaporating. So I'll just top it up with, with more rainwater. But I am I keep using this dye pot and I've been using it all week. So I've, I've probably topped it up with cannabis leaves uh, four times this week because uh, I've been doing a lot of dyeing. But I do have some skeins in here and I want to show you what it looks like. Ready? So should you be using gloves when you're doing this? Uh, it's up to you. I have never stained my hands uh, with cannabis. Um, and it's not too hot right now either. Um, I've let the temperature come down a little bit um, so I can handle it with my hands. It's what, whatever your preference is. But that's the color of it. It's got, it's almost like a goldy, goldy yellow color. And I've got one dried and I, I wanna show you what that looks like. So here's what it looked like when it went in the dye pot. And then when I pulled it out, and I've washed this one as well, that's the color of it. It's, in it. it's a really nice yellowy gold color. And it, it depends how the light hits it. It's got, it reflects a brown. There's a brown that comes off of it as well. It's, it's really nice. And then I did one this morning. So this hasn't been washed yet, but this is, this was, this looked like this. So this skein looked like this skein, and then I dipped this in an, an after bath of iron, and so it brought it out in, into a brown color. It's nice as well. So that's it. That's dyeing with cannabis. It is, as you can see from the color, it's a super nice color, and so I'll continue dyeing with it. I love dyeing with it, and you know, it's, it's I also like it because I am taking someone's garbage or something that they were throwing out. Like they were throwing out these leaves. I take these leaves and I can turn them into something that produces a fantastic color. So that feels good as well. So if we go over it once again, you know, what do we need when we, when we do this? We need um, yarn that has been pre-mordanted and we need some pots. We need a measuring cup if you want or just a cup to scoop it out because that's how I check the color. I like to go in every hour um, and look at it and see if that's a color that, I, that I'd like to have. You notice that when you hold the color up, it's, it's definitely not yellow. Um, but again, when the yarn is in there, when you're pulling it out, it, 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 it takes on a yellow color. And so I like to look at it and see how dark it is. If it's, if it's getting super dark, um, you're still, it's still going to come out yellow, but it's going to come out a, a golden yellow. So I've noticed also, remember what I was talking about, I use this pot over and over and over again, and I just simply keep adding. Um, I notice that the color doesn't change that much. The biggest change is going to be when my when I bring out my yarn, the fir first dye pot, it's going to be a slightly, um, it's a buttery yellow, but as I keep adding the cannabis, it just gets uh, to a more golden color, and it looks really nice. So what you need again is you need the pre mordanted yarn, you need some pots, um, you need a heat source, you need some water, and measuring really, it, you know, it's all ballpark. You don't need to be exact in this. I like to fill up my cannabis um, two-thirds, three-quarters of the way, uh, add water to it, let it simmer for at least five hours, um, take out the cannabis leaves, and put in my pre mordant yarn, let it sit for about an hour, keep checking on it to see if that's the color you like, and I take it out, and I will hang it up. I'll hang it up for a day, maybe two days, um, and then I'll wash it, and then you come out with this uh, beautiful skein. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I really love dyeing with cannabis, and um, I look forward to the fall because this is one of the this is one of my fall dyes. Usually, the cannabis plants are picked in the mid to, to late October, and so it's frantic dyeing and dyeing as much as I can. If you have any questions at all, please fire them off. I love answering your questions, and I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great week. Take care. Bye-bye.